How's it going guys? In today's video, I'm going to be making this creepy looking guy inspired by the one and only BR1 Monsters. Have a look in the description for his Instagram, this guy's super awesome and very talented. So, with all that being said, take a sip and let's dive right on into it. Stun this guy off with the blocking out phase. This is where I go in and get the rough shape of this guy. Not gonna lie, right off the bat, I didn't really know what he was gonna look like. I just knew more the style I was gonna go for. One day I had a feeling just to go onto Instagram. I didn't usually scroll through my feed and stuff like that, but this time I had a feeling to go in and have a look. And that's when I saw BR1 Monsters and instantly fell in love with his style. It's just so loud and unique and kind of reminds me of some cartoon characters I've seen while growing up around the skateboarding kind of scene. I just love how exaggerated, loud, grungy and vibrant his pieces are and so that really inspired me to make a similar kind of style character. Going over the eyes, at this stage I was thinking of making him into a cyclops. But you guys will see later on what exactly I ended up doing. I also ended up covering the eye socket and I kind of like the style without his eyes. I don't know, I think I'm gonna have to go through and make another character in this style if you guys enjoy it enough. And if so, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button because it really lets me know what you guys are thinking and if you guys are enjoying this kind of content. Now my favorite part is the peanut teeth. So I started off with tracing out where the gums roughly sit which gave me an idea of how big the teeth will be. This style, like I said earlier, it's all about exaggerating certain features. And I've seen with BR1, he does his crazy huge looking teeth, so I'm gonna do just that. I love the paint job I did with the teeth and gums, so definitely stick around to the end to see how that turned out. Okay, so now this took some time to do each individual gum, so I'm gonna give you guys this juicy little shot right here. So remember how I said I covered up the eye socket and I ended up liking it? Well, this is kind of what it looked like. The intention here was to make more of a squared shaped cartoony head kind of thing. Now I'm going in with a kebab meat maker. If you guys are new around here, I call this tool the kebab meat maker. Because it shaves off the clay and evens out the surfaces and all the shavings look nice and thin. I'm sorry in advance, I do refer to food a lot in my videos. I'm going in with the hair now. I won't be going into too much depth on YouTube. But if you guys are wanting more in-depth videos, I'll be dropping extended videos where I go more in-depth, show deleted scenes, have tutorials, and more over on my Patreon. So I ended up doing a two-eyed character. I got a couple of suggestions and one of them was a snail character, which kind of reminded me of this style over here. This song is called Frog Based Snails. If you guys have seen the movie Split, you'd know the song. I don't know, this could be the next character. Let me know if you guys want me to make a snail character next. Maybe like a humanoid or something like that in the same style. Going in with the pants. Honestly, this didn't take too much time to make, nor did I want it to. I wanted the main focus to be on the head. So a lot of time and effort went into that. Now it's time for the shoes, which is just legit potatoes that have been cut and then I threw on some laces. Very intricately placing these bad boys on. Now time for the hands. This took a good amount of time to make, like the fingers were just so dang tiny and floppy and make it with clay that I'm not used to as well. It was a good challenge and just like usual, I love a good challenge. I wanted this guy to have some nice swollen knuckles as well, just so the hands don't look so plain and boring. Again, this took some time, so here's another mic shot. Now the nails. This had to be one of my most favorite things to make. It was simple, yet very effective. Going in and making all sorts of cracks and scratches on it as well. Now going in with texturing everything. I did the side to side action everywhere and really emphasized in on the joints just to create more exaggeration. Here I'm making the tank top. All I did for this was cut out some thin sheets of clay, placed it where the clothing ended and blended it out. After that, I went in with some wrinkles. Once all that is done, now we just gotta clean it up and move on to the next phase. 
Alrighty, so now that that is all finished, let's get into making the silicon mold. After this, we'll be getting into some casting, and this is where some intense stuff went on. I won't say too much just yet, I'll let you guys see for yourself just what happened during that phase, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and thicken the silicon into an icing kind of texture using Thibex. I swear, the sounds the silicon makes while mixing is a little sus. So now we're really starting to bulk out the mold, this makes sure that it's nice, sturdy, ready for casting. Now I'm going to go ahead and free this guy from the mold, and I do gotta say the mold for the pants went really well, it naturally holds itself together better than I can hold myself every time I see a juicy burger. And now it's time to begin the heightening of intensity. We start off calm, brushing in the resin and all the deep details, and then things go wild from there. So I'm pouring out the resin, just the usual. I haven't done this in many lifetimes, but I'm pouring it. Things go smoothly, oh, when all of a sudden, I feel a oh, coldness shit. on my hand. Oh, f Oh, f Good. Oh. 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 oh my god. Holy sh Oh. Oh my god. Holy sh Oh my. It's all over my hands. Oh my god. <coughs> god damn. Okay, so now that the intensity built up and now we're chilling now, let's get into some painting. First I hated painting this guy, cause painting is just something I don't do at all, but I'm not gonna lie, I started to enjoy the process towards the teeth area. I guess it wasn't too enjoyable at first, cause the painting took so much time it was wild. So if you've made it this far, please do hit that like and subscribe button if you have somewhat benefited from this video, whether it be a little laugh, somewhat entertaining in a pretty average way, if you guys just like watching fails here and there, I got you covered. So basically what I do with the painting of this guy is that I create gradients to make it pop and have more of a somewhat realistic style. So for the teeth I have black right where the teeth start and then I go in with a brown. And then after this I'll add some off yellow. And so in doing this it creates a nice gradient. I do the same thing with the gums but with a purple palette. So again dark purple, then a lighter purple and then a light pink. The only difference is, is that later on I actually added a white on the very tip of the gums. This really made a pop and it looks like they're kind of glistening. Then I painted red on the veins as well as the eye sockets. If you guys want to know all the materials, I'll be leaving them in the description down below. Now I do gotta say that I last minutely changed the eye color slightly. So, I love how I created that the eyes look like the kind of glowing blue, but instead of leaving this awkward purple in the middle, I changed it to a dark blue which faded into a lighter blue, again adding just a little bit of white to make the eyes pop. I thought the hair was a little bit plain with just matte black, so I added a slight midnight blue highlight in it. Now this is where the skin really comes to life. I added a gradient dry brush on some of the higher areas around this guy. So I started off with a dark green, then went in with a lighter green, and then I went in with a yellow. I did the exact same thing to the arms, 
And now, let's get into the pants. The pants were pretty simple. I just threw on dark blue, and then I added some light blue dry brushing around areas where it would have a lot of wear and tear in. Kind of hard to explain, but that's kind of just what I did. And now once the shoes have been painted matte black, it is time for the final reveal. Cold like zero degrees, I'm out the cage, gotta let out the beast.